Hi guys, so I'm not even sure where I'm going with what I'm going to show you guys right now. I Over the last few days I've seen like um, Tonic release, you know, their White Wonderland collection and um, when the girl was talking about it or the lady there, um, she had this really cool card and it had all these pieces and I kind of, in my mind, deconstructed it and kind of put it together. I don't even know where that is. If I find it, I'll show it to you guys because I'll, I'll show you that tutorial later. But for right now, um, yesterday when I was watching uh, Craft Day, Sarah had this set of like aperture cards and they looked pretty cool. Um, I, it's just, I'm not a huge fan of having like the shiny cards, you know what I'm saying? Where the, I don't know, some of these card kits do that. And I know Hunky Dora does it, but I only buy their, you know, sets here and there. Uh, if I really, really like it, even though it has that, that shininess too. I don't know how to explain it, but, um, and those are just punch and put together, right? So I, I don't know where I'm going with this video quite yet. I know I'm going to show you how to make the basic construction of an aperture type card. I hope it works out for you guys because I think I made it in a way that's going to be pretty straightforward. If I have any links, there will be affiliate links, which means I will make a small commission if you use those links. But like I said, I don't know where I'm going with this card for right now. I'm just going to work with cardstock and then <laughs> we'll see what we do there. So, I mean, everybody has cardstock, right? Um, so uh, let me show you a little bit. Uh, you know, I was starting out, I made... This one kind of worked, kind of didn't work. You know, I didn't really glue it down. I kind of did. I kind of like the way this one works better. But this is a four by six. And then I thought, well, maybe, and, and it's a weird size. I didn't want to have like increments of like sixteenths of an inch or eighths even, even though I think this one does have, well, this one doesn't have eighths either. Um, but this one is kind of nicer. I don't know. See, I, I wanted to show you guys this other one. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Okay, so I have this one, and then I start working on a different one to make it more of a standard A2 size, and then that just didn't even, I didn't even, as you can see, finish that one. I was like, eh. But I went back to the standard A2 size, and then I end up with this one. And the aperture is going to be a little different. It's going to work a little bit better. I know what I did wrong here, so uh, what I show you is going to work better. But when you open it up, the person opens it. Oh, and it has a little message, and you're going to decorate this however you want, right? This is from one piece of 8.5 by 11 piece of paper, and that's what I wanted to... Uh, engineer basically right so we don't have to go and get a bunch of papers and I hardly even work with 12 by 12 paper anymore I have some but you know I have all these different notes and then they you know I erase them I put it back I change some numbers and some numbers are in my head which is not good but hopefully that's why I started writing them down because I'm like okay hopefully I can explain this to you guys and then we'll dress it up but like I said I'm not sure how I'm gonna dress it up I guess it depends on how long this video is maybe it'll be something basic or maybe um, I'll have to leave the decoration for another time you will need like some kind of embossing and embossing a uh, scoring board or whatever you like to score on I would not recommend scoring on your guillotine if you're going to use a guillotine like the Kefir's Companion one because it's notorious for like the scoring is kind of horrible and also even even just cutting and I've already did a review of these because when you're measuring here okay you have a pretty big gap like my nail will fit in this gap okay you measure from this side of the gap you measure from that side of the gap you put it right in the center it looks like it should be right in the center so just when you go to do that know that maybe when you put your paper down don't put it like way over here because that little gap and don't put it past the gap but put it right in the center of the gap okay so <laughs> I've already talked about those things before um and you know I didn't even grab paper yet to cut up so let me grab <laughs> uh, la, la. let me get some paper and maybe I'll use a color that I'll end up making a card with now what's going to be weird is that I'm going to tell you guys instead of just cutting straight down the center of your paper to get your eight and a half by five I'm well, sorry by five and a half standard a two size card to make it work in one piece of paper we are going to open this up cut this up a different way so I'm going to cut my paper and again the finished dimensions are are five and a half by four when the card is closed so if you want it by four and a quarter because you want it to be standard two size you can do the math okay <laughs> I'm gonna leave it at that so uh, we're gonna take this guy and and it might seem odd but it just for you to get the strips of paper that you need to finish up your card all these other little aperture pieces this guy and these pieces from the one piece of paper we have to cut our card in this way okay so I am going to um, I'm gonna first do the five and a half so the length of it I'm gonna measure to five and a half okay and again I'm kind of looking down that little gap there to hopefully have five and a half and then this way I'm gonna go to eight okay we want our paper five and a half by eight that's gonna leave us with some other papers 
pieces that we're gonna need. Now hopefully you can see what I cut off is three inches wide here, it's three inches wide here or whatever. This is all about the same. So we're gonna use these pieces in just a minute. Actually, since our, our cutting board is here already, I'm gonna leave this to the side. Again, it's eight by five and a half cut in a funny way. Do not just cut your piece of paper in half or this won't work for you. Um, we need the three by six and a half inch piece. So when you have these pieces, this is not six and a half inches. So you're gonna cut it from here. And if you measure it, it should be three inches wide because the way we cut our paper by six and a half inches. Okay, so just trust me on this one, hopefully. <laughs> six and a half inches right there. So we're gonna need that, that's this outer piece that holds your aperture kind of in place. Um, and then we have these little bits left. They're both three inches wide, right? From what we cut. So we're gonna take it for the three inch side. I'm just gonna stack them together, it doesn't really matter. And we're gonna cut these to be three and a quarter inches. And these are all the cuts, guys. Well, there's another little cut we're gonna do, but that's it. So you have two pieces that are three by three and a quarter. You have the piece that's three by six and a half, and we have our base piece that is uh, five and a half by eight. I'm gonna clear this little area and we're gonna move on from there. So weird, I'm kind of bummed out. I don't know where that other card is that I've tried to copy the, um, what Tonic had done. Well, I wish they had a video for it. It's just a really cool card, but I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll get to it. Okay, so we have our pieces. We're done with this. So our base piece, I'm gonna bring this over. We are going to just score at two inches on either side. So two inches because it's going to be a gatefold card. Two inches. And then when we gatefold it to the center. So that's, you know, so if you were to make it a standard A2 size, it's not just that you're messing with these numbers. <laughs> you're also uh, going to have to mess with the little flap numbers that, that I made. So I'm not completely swishing this until this one comes in. That way I know that they're nice and together and gonna make a nice gatefold. Okay, I'm just telling you, it's not as easy as saying, oh no, you know, I'm gonna make a gatefold with the standard A2 size, but then you gotta change up the inner flaps, okay? So we have that. That's our base. This big guy that's uh, six and a half by three, we're gonna score it at half inches on both sides. So we have a nice half inch piece of uh, flap there to kind of glue down later. So basically we're gonna score this. I'll score it right now. You don't really have to score it too badly because whenever your card's all done, that's when I really like to score everything. There is a couple other things we're gonna do to that piece, but I'll get there when we get there. That way hopefully it makes sense. We have our pieces that are three and a quarter by three. This is where you're gonna pay attention. Now you can make this as a template so that you're going to use later or you can just go right to making your card like I would just go right into making my card but as you can see I have tons of templates that I start off with I wouldn't stick it together but I would keep them and say okay these are the pieces this is how I want it to look so right here my notes are that the three inch piece wide should be this way and the three and a quarter is this way okay so from the three and a quarter being the length here we're going to score them at half an inch so three and a quarter Three and a quarter, we're gonna score them at half an inch. Okay, that's gonna be our tab, our glue area. All right, so half an inch. And then I'm gonna put them together because this is the easiest way to do this, to cut them together. I'm gonna turn this to the side. And this is a three inch, right? So if you were to cut this right down the center, it would be at one and a half inches. So I'm just gonna make a line here, just to kind of help me out, one and a half inches. Again. If you want to make your own template, or if you're afraid, but I, I just need a little, a little idea of where the middle is. That's all I'm looking for. And then I'm going to turn this the opposite way, but this way, so I can use my guide here to let me know to put a little dot at one and three eighths of an inch. Okay, one and three. I'm not pushing down hard, but again, if you're making a template, push down hard. It doesn't matter. And I'm just going to make a little dot right there. So where I have my mark for one and a half inches, I'm putting a little dot. And you can see my dot's kind of off, right? And now that I look at the camera, I can see that it's a little bit high. Okay. I'm going to hold these pieces together. <laughs> okay. This is the trickiest part. Now, if you have a um, square, a die for like a square that you like, that if you, when you put it here as a, just angle it, like let's say this is my die. I'm like, oh, you know what? That cuts right from the center, right to the corners run it through with a die. That would be great because it'll be beautiful. <laughs> it'll be gorgeous and nice and crisp. I'm just going to cut it by hand. So I'm going to start from the very corner and head towards that 
that dot. Boom, right there. So again, if you want to keep this as a template, just keep it as a template and always just, you know, use a pencil, make your marks and now you know, oh, every time I do this, I can just use these as templates, okay? So you saw I just took it apart. You can flip it, you can do whatever you want so that they end up looking right when they close. When you close these up like this, it should only be about four inches wide. It could be a little bit shorter because it's going to end up closing like this, but when someone closes the card, they don't know what it looks like on the inside. They don't know there's a little gap right here. So if you don't like that, cut a little bit higher up. Don't do one and three eighths inch down, do one and a quarter, right? Um, not one, yeah, one and a quarter. Because I went to one and three eighths and that's where I put my dot from here, right? So if you don't like that, you want it to be a little closer, just experiment. So, so make your little templates, you know, whatever it is that you like to do. All right, one last thing we're going to do. I already scored these pieces, right? Now, if you remember, this is three inches wide, which means we need to know where the center is, which is one and a half. Again, do you want to press down the whole time or do you want to just eyeball it? Because I'm going to use the same one for my card later. And I just, I just need to have an idea of where the one and a half is. Okay, so one and a half inches, just the center. We're looking for the center. And when we turn it this way, it's five and a half inches deep. So the center of five and a half inches would be two and a half is five, two and three quarters, right? Two and three quarters. So at two and three quarters, I'm not press, pressing real hard yet, but I will like here because I know it's going to cut that. So now I have like a bullseye there, or a target, should I say, not a bullseye. And as you can see, this other target, I already cut pretty well. So again, I'm eyeballing this. You do not have to eyeball this. This would be something that would be great to plan out in, uh, if you're good with like design space or <laughs> those kind of things. You can definitely plan something like this out. So I am eyeballing this pretty badly. Not badly, but I mean like this is what I'm relying on, eyeballing it. And I'm just going to put this little circle on here. This circle is from the... Um, uh, diamond press set, the nesting circles, uh, it's a two inch circle. So if that helps you, if you have a two inch circle, that'd be great. If you do a little bit bigger, don't push it too much bigger than that because you're going to end up on the outside of your aperture. It's just not going to look good. So either a two inch or a little bit smaller or a little bit bigger will work. Okay. I think that's all we need with the scoring board. Hopefully you guys are following me <laughs> in my mind. I'm like, oh, this is great. This is, this is wonderful. You know, so I'm gonna put this through. Now, of course, you can dress this up. It doesn't have to be super, you know, basic like this. Right now, I'm just using these pieces. So if we want to dress it up, and I have this, and I have my little pieces here. I'm trying to think what I need to do. We can do panels on the side. We can decorate this and then cut through both pieces. You can decorate this and make another larger aperture around it. Ooh, maybe that's what I'll do. Yeah, because then you can take the circle that comes after this one and cut, you know what I'm saying? It'll be very thin on the edges, but you can do different things obviously to dress this up. I now I'm just doing the basics. So let's bring back our little pieces and we need to fold them on those score lines. And we need to stick them down. So let me turn this over and did I not bring my glue? I'm almost done this in one shot and I don't know where my glue is, darn it. Okay, well, I'll use this one even though I don't want to use this. I'd rather use a stronger glue, but I have a dotted tool, dotted glue here. Okay, you saw that I folded that. It's hard for me to explain, so this goes this way. If you want to eyeball it, I would eyeball it. If you want to measure this, you're going to do it so it's one and a quarter inches down. Okay, because you, uh, this is three inches. That means you have two and a half inches left, right, of the five and a half inches. So if you want to... Make sure you're putting this where you want. I'm going to line this up somewhere and just kind of look at what one and a quarter inches looks like. And it's about here. And as I'm doing that, I'm also kind of eyeballing, just making sure I have it right on the line. And it's about one. I'm a little bit too high, I think. Let me see. One, two, yeah, something like that. Just trying to straighten it out. Okay. So hopefully you can kind of see what that means. It means it goes this way, we're going to turn it in this way. So for me, I rather just eyeball it. 
then you know kind of measuring like here I'm gonna make sure this one's exactly the same as this one so I'm just gonna lay it on here before I stick it down and I'm gonna turn it down and make sure that that's gonna be stuck in the right spot when it gets there so if I keep going this way yep and that's how I eyeballed it <laughs> okay you don't have to eyeball it you can do whatever you want now the other thing is when you close it, you can have it close like this. They didn't intertwine. I hope you can see that one's behind the other. Or you can lock it up so that they intertwine. So that one's in front, one's behind. And when you close it, it's like this. Whoop. Okay. But that's why you need that little holder piece. This piece that we just created. So I'm going to put glue on the back of this. And I hope that it was easy, guys. That's it. That is it. If you want to put panels, you want to decorate it, you're going to decorate the front. Um, you know, your gateful card. That's it. This is exactly the same up and down because we went with half and half, right? So what I would like to do is I open this up and I look at it. I don't really stick this down quite yet. Now, we already know that this is, what, three inches? Three inches wide. Our card is only four inches wide at this base piece here. So basically half inch in on either side is where you want this. So as long as you put it somewhere that you can kind of see that you got your little half inch you should be good, but since this is handmade, you know, you might want to make sure, like I'm laying it down, I kind of see this, I kind of see that. I think that's pretty good. And I will stick that down. Now, that's it, guys, that is it. Check this out. What? Okay. And then you can open it back up. Now, see, that's the, there we go. That's why I was like, don't stick anything down until you're done because it's quite possible that you need to arrange something. So do you see how I kind of had a low resistance? Now let's close this up. There we go. Does that work for you guys? Pretty cool, right? So why am I doing this? Because in the middle here, you could have stamped something. Obviously, you're going to stamp it first. You can stamp it later too. Like now that way, you know, you have it where you have it. Um, that it's correct but that's up to you so let me grab something just to decorate it just so we have something to look at and I think that was pretty quick and I will try and write the numbers and everything down because I know this one's a little bit trickier um, in the description box at least the numbers for the pieces I'm really you know what no that's what I'll do I'll put it on my blog so I'll have a link in the description box to go over to my blog for the actual numbers and um, steps kind of written down just in case uh, but yeah let me grab some paper and we'll try to do some decoration of this okay since this isn't really what this is about but I do want to mention obviously these flaps are two inches by five and a half so I wanted to mat them very lightly so this is one and seven eighths inch by five and three eighths Okay, so there's only like a sixteenth of an inch all around because I just wanted it to have more of the color. So I think that's really cute. I am going to use a wet glue like this one because I'm going to have to make sure we got that down. And after I do that, I'm going to just show you, I guess I'll stick one side down. I'm going to cut out some different things. I have this set. Um, I think it's still available on HSN. It's from Diamond Press, but I'll show it to you in just a second here. This paper is super old. It's from one of the um, Crafters Companion sub kits. I just I have uh, a few sitting here and I grab them. But what happens is sometimes I'll buy extra club kits and whenever they're super sale. And I'll just take everything that's good out of it and I'll put it in something else. So I don't know which one this came from, but I have a feeling it had to do with like the characters, like the animal characters box. I don't know. Just any paper, obviously. It's whatever you got. And this one... So very small area all around. And then I'm gonna put that to the side for now. I have this set, again, I picked up not too long ago, uh, this Diamond Press Lots of Love Stamps and Die Kit. And what I think I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna stamp this so lovely. And it's one solid piece, and I thought that might be cute. And then it has a die that you can cut it out with, so I'm gonna do that. And then I'm gonna cut out maybe some of this foliage to decorate around the aperture on the inside. And Maybe some of the little birds. Oh, you know it would be cute though? Also, you can always use the stamps to make it just look like... Just add a little texture since we didn't do much on the inside. You know? But you can take like the stamps, just do a little ghosting. Like a little of this, maybe like this one here. But you know, just dress it up that way. Um, but 
we could have done all that before you put it together. Obviously I put this together just to show you the tutorial on that and then you're gonna do what you want with it. But I'm doing it a little bit backwards. So let me, uh, like I said, I'm gonna stamp that, cut it out, maybe cut out a few of the little birds, cut out some of this foliage, and then we'll just decorate the inside out. I will check in. So I'm seriously, you know, this thing comes with all kinds of stuff. <laughs> just uh, stamping, I stamped with some pigment inks um, from Crafters Companion. And then I thought, oh, I need to let that dry. So I put some embossing powder on it and just heated it up. So just real quick like i said the video is more about the card technique than anything else and then i have these little guys and i'm trying to see which one's what i think this one did the same thing just stamped them in uh pigment inks and this guy is this guy okay and then i'll cut out maybe some like i said the foliage and maybe some different colors i don't i'm not quite sure what i'll do with it actually this one's good maybe a couple of those We'll see. Okay, so I have my little pieces cut out here and then I'm gonna do the stamping first just in case I'm not sure how we're gonna build this up. So uh, let me see what fits in there. We have hello friend. We have you got this, which is very cute. Thank you. Hmm. Let me see here. Let me see how this fits because like I said, I should have stamped this before. Actually, that's not even a problem. Let's do you got this <laughs> and I'll tell you why it's not a problem. Cause these things aren't set in stone here. So you can just, whoot pop them out and <laughs> get it out of the way okay and now you have that little hole you can look right into and do your stamping so I'll probably just stamp it in black since um I didn't put any kind of background paper on there but again just matte and layer like if you wanted some paper back here then it would have to be a piece of paper that is about four inches wide by five and a half or a little bit smaller right so it's a nice mat I'm just gonna use some versifying so I'm gonna give it a second to dry because versifying is quite sticky and wet <laughs> So I'm just gonna put that. I'm gonna hit it with the heat tool, let it dry a little bit, and then we'll okay. stack everything up. Now again, put this back in here. I know that's not ideal, but it's okay. <laughs> All right, and then again, you can interlock them or you can just have one go on top of the other. It doesn't really matter, however you, it looks like an aperture either way, right? It doesn't really make a big difference. And I'm just gonna take some pieces and I was kind of playing with this. I don't really know exactly what I wanna do. But since these are over here or facing down yeah so i think i'm going to stick that guy there and then i have this pretty piece that i want to kind of cascade around here too but then i have this little guy and maybe he stands here on his own he looks like he's looking up that's why i'm like i don't know what angle to put him at so cute okay it is starting to get hot and i'm starting to get a little ugh. all right I was trying to see if in the kit there's something for that little, this little ball right here. I guess if you wanted to cut out a different color and then cut that little ball out and then stick it down, you can do that. Um, but there's no like special extra little die that's just a circle or something. Something like that. And this guy I'll probably use a little 3D glue gel to pop him down right there. Okay, so I'll do that in just a little while. And then this guy down here, we're gonna stick him down with this blue piece. And I kind of went with these colors because of the, all the feathers on the front of, of the card. So I just chose some colors that are kind of in there. And this can always kind of protrude into there because that just gives it a little more character, right? Have some prettiness going that way. And right now I just have this little guy. I'll probably just stick him down by his little feet because he needs to go somewhere Look like he's standing on some berries, I guess. <laughs> Let me bring him down just a little bit. Oh my goodness, what are my kids doing? What are my kids doing? I'm asking you guys. <laughs> I just heard a loud thud. We went this morning to get their uh, their Chromebooks and things, and it was really cute, actually. Let me take a second. Um, Dorian's, uh, he's going to sixth grade. It's a new campus. And then when we drove up, there was a lady there with like a bullhorn. I'm like, okay. And I thought she was telling me what to do. <laughs> kind of like driving here, but nobody was really there. It was early. I went early on purpose because I know people like to sleep in and I'm awake. Right. And, um, and she's like, what's your student's name? And then, or she asked if he's with me or whatever, or my student's with me. I'm like, yeah. She's like, what's his name? Uh, or, you know, what's the student's name is what she said. And I'm like, Dorian. She's like, Dorian. Okay. She's like, welcome Dorian. It's sixth grade. Really cute. So it was like an exciting thing. And he was all, oh, okay. <laughs> It was all excited. Really, really cute. Okay, so let me put this back. And so it, I, I, I thought that was really sweet. And if I expected that, I would have um, brought my camera out. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know they were going to do anything special for these little guys. So that was really sweet. Okay, I want this to stick down right now real quick. So I'm just going to stick this on here. Um, the other thing, you know, 
uh, you can do is like in nesting circles, I think this was Sarah had or nesting squares, or if you want to really deck it out with lots of kind of fun interlocking pieces, but that's up to you, of course. I only put glue, sorry, if it was out of frame on half of this. And I'm just kind of eyeballing this, and I'm just gonna put them right here. And then shove down, obviously, one side <laughs> so it sticks. Now your card opens, and it says, so lovely, you got this. Oh, I love it. I'm going to put, like I said, this guy with a little bit of pop-up, but it's not going to show too much. But hopefully that was a fun thing for you guys, if you can see kind of what we're doing here. And I think that was fun, especially since we didn't need anything special. Um, you know, just good old measuring and a little cutting, and it wasn't even that much of either one of those things. So I think it was fun. So hopefully you guys like it, and I will see you guys at the next one. Bye now.